Decepticons, Transformers, Autobots. Who's your favorite Transformer guy? Uh, Jetfire. Jetfire. And uh, Blitzwing. Triple Change or Blitzwing. Favorite Transformers episode or the film, the movie? Oh, the film. The, the film, movie? film, film. The, the animated yeah. film. Yeah. Definitely the animated film. Uh, are we rolling? rolling? We be rolling. Oh, oh man. We, oh, it's Big Pimpin'. Can't talk about our stuff, man. Flashbackers, talk, yeah. welcome to New Comic Wednesday. We are back, y'all. 30th of October. Patrick Michael Strange is back up in the house. We missed him so much last week. Oh, my God. <laughs> my man, Troy so, David Phillips, I miss him too, man. Sorry we missed y'all last week. I was out doing my thing in Vegas. He was. This brother was handling business here in the shop. He left me behind. He left me. Man, was, but you, you were thought of, man. Man, you it was cold of. outside. There were wolves after me. <laughs> well, we're back, man. We're back. We're, we're back. back so, uh, so you're going to have some uh, stories to tell us about uh, Vegas and all, right? I think what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Oh. We'll be right back after this with the with the new releases for this week, y'all. All right. Kicking things off from Marvel Comics, we have Infinity. This is uh, issue number 22 of The Avengers. And over at Dark Horse, we have Itty Bitty Hellboy. So cute. This is issue number three. Three or five people. Don't snooze. Marvel, Ultimate Comics in print. This is Ultimate Comics X-Men, issue number 33, World War X. Oop. And over at Dark Horse, part of the Project Black Sky movement, where Dark Horse gives you some of their superheroes, we have Captain Midnight, an uh, old-time great. This is issue number four, introducing the Sky Man. Give me that. Image Comics giving us the 40th issue of Profit. And over at Aspen, part of their 10 for 10 line, we have Michael Turner's Fathom. This is issue number three, and this is cover A. Uh, Michael Turner. Rest in peace. Colleen Doran with A Distant Soil. This is issue number 42. Awesome cover. And over at Marvel slash Icon imprint, we have Kick-Ass 3. This is issue four, and I love Hit Girl. Oh, yeah. Dynamite Entertainment, y'all. Bionic Man, issue number 25. Awesome cover. And over at Boom Studios, we have Clive Barker's Next Testament, issue number 5, and another great cover. Now, here we go. I've been waiting for this. i got goose flesh just thinking about it. This is Marvel's Infinity, part 5 of 6. And that's not goose bumps, people. That's goose flesh. That's what Mr. Troy David has. Here we go with Teen Titans Annual Number 2, part of the New 52. It's Superboy versus the Son of Superman. And from Aspen, celebrating 10 years, y'all. Soulfire, issue number 8. Over at Marvel, we have issue 23 of the Scarlet Spider, seeing the Scarlet Spider face off against Kraven the Hunter. Man, that looks good. Yes, sir. And Marvel keeps it coming with Uncanny X-Force. This is issue number 13. Girls are rocking it on there. And another girl that's rocking it, we have over at Dynamite Entertainment, we have Warlord of Mars, Deja Thoris, number 31. Um, Y'all know how my, I feel about Deja Thoris if you watch uh, our flashback episodes. And here we are, Clive Barker's 2013 annual for Hellraiser. Pretty scary stuff on that one. One of my favorite titles from Image Comics, Brian K. Vaughn, Fiona Staples. I love it. It's uh, chapter 15 of Saga. You know, you know Patrick? Yes, sh sir. Should we start referring to this book as Harvey Award Winner yes, Saga? Yes, sir. I think we should. Well deserved. <laughs> well deserved. Check it out. And from DC Comics, we have uh, Nightwing, annual number one. Shout out to Kyle Higgins. And it's a Batgirl Wanted tie-in, so make sure you pick that one up. And over at IDW, we have G.I. Joe, number nine. Love that cover. Kind of reminiscent of an older uh, part of the Marvel storyline cover. All right, for my younger readers, Kaboom Studios gives me Hero Bear and the Kid. This is the 2013 annual. Awesome cover. Love that. Yes. And over at Dark Horse, we have The True Lives of the Fabulous Killjoys. This is issue number five. Gotta love it. And DC Comics giving us part five of Lights Out. This is Green Lantern Annual Number Two. Oh, sucky, sucky now. And over at Action Comics, Superman, we have Annual Number Two. Um, 
part of the uh, well, part one of the Krypton Return storyline. What? What? Krypton is returning? Uh, yeah. Have you been snoozing on Action Comics, Patrick? Shame. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog, issue 254, Archie Comics teaming up with Sega. I can't believe they've been at it that long, man. Oh, yeah. Over at DC, we have Forever Evil Argus, part one of six. I'm getting more uh, out there with the Forever Evil stuff. Check it out if you're all about it. Here we go, people. Top Cow, Image Comics, Bushido, number five of five. This oh, is I it, y'all. this book. Way of the Warrior. And over at IDW, we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Micro Series number seven, Bebop and Rocksteady, y'all. Two of my favorite turtle, turtle villains there. Okay, here we are. Oh, Captain yeah. America, Living Legend, issue number two. Beautiful. And over at Marvel as well, we have Thor, Crown of Fools. Uh, this is part one, getting you guys ready for Thor the Dark World. And IDW giving us Godzilla, oh, yeah. Rulers of the Earth, issue number five. It's Godzilla, no! <laughs> <laughs> and if you are loving that series on HBO, we have George R.R. R. Martin, A Game of Thrones, issue number 17. And Marvel has given us the Superior Spider-Man. This is issue number 20. Keep it coming, Dan Slott. Keep it coming. And at IDW, we have Kiss Kids, issue number three for the youngest fan of Kiss. IDW gives us the Powerpuff Girls, issue number two. They oh, are so man. adorable. Yes, they are. Love it. And at IDW as well, we have Dinosaurs Attack, number four. And Troy, David, you're going to have to wait to read this one because I want it first. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> you know what? You could share my My Little Pony Annual 2013 Equestria Girls. I will, because okay. I do like the Equestria Girls. Yeah, you know what? I'm not ashamed to admit that I've read this. All right. <laughs> Me neither. And for all you bronies, you also may want to check out IDW Transformers Prime Beast Hunters number six. Love it. And from Avatar. We have crossed Badlands. This is issue number 40. You know what? I hadn't thought before what happens when a monk gets crossed. I have to check this out. What is he doing with his fingers? <sighs> and as part of the uh, Infinity storyline, we have Guardians of the Galaxy number 8. And if you want to check out Groot in the upcoming movie, check out our flashback page. And from Xenoscope Entertainment, people, Hit List number 2. And at Marvel, Deadpool kills Deadpool. This is it, y'all. This is issue number four, the final uh, part of the story. Parental advisory, not for kids. Image Comics giving us five ghosts, issue number six. Samurai. And at Marvel again, we have Avengers uh, point one or AI. Is it AI. AI. Sorry about that, y'all. This is AI, issue number five. Check it out. Smallville Season 11 Special. This is special number three. Oh, that Lex Luthor. I liked him as Luthor. I did too. He was a good guy. And oh, he was a bad guy. Well, he was a bad guy, but he was a good guy. <laughs> but um, I liked him. And at DC as well, we have Swamp Thing Annual Number 2. This one looks pretty cool, y'all. Swamp Thing is back and handling business again. All right. Red Circle Comics. First issue. This is The Fox. Uh, I see Mark Wade's name, and it just reminds me that he owes me a run of Daredevil. And Dean Haspiel's a real nice guy, too. Good stuff. Brings back some classic style for y'all. And at Dynamite, Troy's favorite company, we have Ash in the Army of Darkness. This is issue number one from Steve Niles and Dennis Galetto. This is my boomstick. Boomstick. Image Comics giving us sex. Issue number eight. Patrick, get your mind out the gutter. Okay, Troy David is the master of sex, and that's why he likes Witchblade number 170, and that's why he's the one that put uh, Witchblade into that um, pose right there. Uh, I wasn't the artist. Kaboom Studios gives us Adventure Time! This is the 2013 Spooktacular number one. Yeah, that's what girls say when they see uh, Troy when they get ready to hit the sack. And so we go to Dark Horse Comics, The Raven and the Red Death. This is the one-shot some awesomeness from Richard Corbin. Richard Corbin, master of the horror genre. Marvel Comics, giving us part two of two. This is the Trial of the Punisher. Looks good. And at 
Marvel, we have the finale of the Battle of the Atom storyline. This is X-Men Battle of the Atom, number two, and this is chapter ten. This is where it all finishes up, guys. Okay, we're jumping back into the Superior, Superior Spider-Man Team-Up. Uh, this is Superior Spider-Man Team-Up, special number one, and this is the third part of the Arms of the Octopus. The finale, y'all. And bringing out a new series, and he's back. Y'all missed him, y'all loved him at DC Vertigo. The Sandman Overture, Neil Gaiman is back on the title with J.H. Williams the third, who you loved off of Batwoman. You want to pick this up. This is issue number one, guys. And look at that. Andy Kubert, thank you so much. Damien, son of Batman, issue number one of four. What more can you say, people? What more can you say? I thought he was dead. You know what? He is an Al Ghul. We do have <laughs> Lazarus Pits. <laughs> and at uh, DC as well, we have Aquaman, annual number one. Let's find out what happens to Vostok of the Others in the Trial of the Others. And here we go, people. Ultimate Comics imprint for Marvel. This is Ultimate Comics Cataclysm Point One. Spinning off the events of Hunger, we are seeing some huge changes for the Ultimate Universe. Pay close attention. And we will now head over oh. to the variant covers. Let's go! Let's go! And over at IDW, we have the Transformers Robots in Disguise. Uh, this is issue number 22 of Robots in Disguise. Two great variants. Part of the uh, prelude to Dark Cybertron. And IDW, keeping it cool, this is My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, issue number 12. Look at that. Such cute stuff for this brony. <laughs> and over at IDW as well, we have uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, issue number 27. I'm loving this stuff. IDW's doing a great job on this uh, relaunch of the series. Uh, I agree with you. I agree with you. Thank you. Now, at Xenoscope Entertainment, which mm -hmm. I think is a very good company, mm -hmm. we don't talk about them anywhere near enough, this is the Grim Fairy Tales No Tomorrow. I am loving this title. I am absolutely loving this book. And I know our great variants. I know our flashbackers love Xenoscope, so shout out to Xenoscope. They love it. Our flashbackers love it, and I love the women on this. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, except, of course, for Death. Uh, she doesn't love nobody. Oh, okay. I'll watch <laughs> out for her then. And again with Xenoscope, we have Grim Fairy Tales Presents Realm Knights. This is issue number three. And again, just look at how amazing they draw their women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a special shout-out to Connor. The artwork is beautiful all the way across here. Yes, sir. All right. Now, last but by no means least. No, sir. This is from Dynamite Entertainment, The Shadow Year One. Okay, you see the Matt Wagner name. You know Chris Matt, Samney. You know Matt Wagner from books like... Grendel, yes, books sir. like Mage. Matt Wagner is awesome. The Shadow is an awesome character. Year One is a wonderful series. Look at those awesome, beautiful covers here, people. You just can't go wrong. Howard Chaikin, Chris Samney, Matt Wagner. Um, just beautiful stuff. Alex Ross. Yeah, you know, loving it. <clears throat> you put those two words together, Alex and Ross. <laughs> yeah, that's that's squishy goodness, people. Good variant covers. We'll be back with our picks of the week. Okay. Yo! Back. We're in effect? I think so. All right. Rex and effects. Rex and effect. In uh, the house, y'all. What was their famous song? Was it Rum Shaker? Yes. Oh, uh, all I want to do is almost zoom, 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 and a bum, bum. <laughs> I couldn't believe you couldn't remember that. I, 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 I came back. I came back real quick. Oh, yeah. Did you ever see that video? Uh, of course I did. I'm not talking about that here. YouTube, y'all. Uh, <laughs> YouTube. After you watch our YouTube channel, if you watch this flashback, Rex, uh, YouTube, Rex and Effect, Rex Rump and Shaker. Effect. Rump Shaker. You'll, mm -hmm. you, you'll thank us later. Oh, yeah, you, yeah. Let's get to the picks, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, since you were gone... Yes, sir. How about you step in and show me what you got? Definitely, but I just want to tell you two, I'm going to put it on camera, you need to show me what came out last week, because since I wasn't here. Oh, okay. I, I want to make sure I don't miss out on anything. Sorry, guys, sorry we, you missed this out. I know we've missed two weeks so far since we started doing this. Um, we hate to miss out an episode where we'll try to put some stuff in the can so we can get it for y'all. Um, because we love doing this. We love giving you guys this stuff. So um, we'll try to do better next time. I'm sorry. I had to go to Vegas. I had to spend his money. Oh, had to <laughs> go to Vegas. Moral imperative, huh? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. All right. So um, to punish you, I'm going to start off with Marvel's The Trial of the Punisher. This is uh, my top, well, 
starting off my picks of the week. This is issue number two of The Trial of the Punisher. I just love the artwork in this uh, particular book uh, by Miko Swayan. Shout out to him and Mark Guggenheim. He's a writer on this, but just some beautiful stuff, guys. Um, from flipping through this, it has me intrigued. I can't wait to thumb through this. You have a cameo appearance from Daredevil. Just some great looking stuff and um, Mako Soyan never disappoints me as an artist. Um, just looks great. I don't want to go give you away too much, but uh, what is he on, on trial for again? Punisher, you know, he's the anti-hero, getting yeah. himself in trouble again. Well, looks I'll, good. I'll tell you, I, I hear a lot of people say that, you know, maybe the Punisher is kind of strayed away from his roots a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, Guggenheim is definitely the writer to sort of definitely. bring the Punisher back down solid and give you the Punisher that you have... Yeah, I mean, this is this is what you want. That's people. classic Punisher right here. Against the Daredevil. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This is this is what you've been hoping for. So, you know, the Punisher in space and all that stuff. You yeah. know, maybe maybe that was losing you. Bring it back here. He's it, bringing it's, it back. It's, it's, all, it's back down to earth here, people. Check it out, It's guys. the Punisher, Marvel Comics, Trial of the Punisher, issue number two. Issue number two, and do we have issue one in stock? Uh, you know, we might. We might. But it sold really well. A lot of people didn't snooze on it. So don't snooze. Get two, and then we'll find issue number one if you really want it. Choice is the man. He can get you every book you want. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, I'm still getting you that Detective Comics 27, first Batman. Thank you, sir. I need you $500,000, though. So. I'll handle that later. Okay. Let's go. What's your uh, first pick of the... Okay. <clears throat> I, uh, I snapped this up. Damien, son of Batman. Okay, now y'all heard me say Andy Kubert. Mm -hmm. I really don't need to say too much more than that. Andy Kubert, uh, you know, son of the legendary Joe Kubert. Yes, sir. But a talent on his own. Yes, don't think he that is. he's in his father's shadow. No, no, no. This man is amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, well, him and his brother. They're yes, both sir. amazing. Andy and Anna. Oh, look at that. Yeah, oh. look at that, Awesomeness. people. You want this. Yes, you okay? do. You really do. Uh, for people who uh, had followed along the uh, the back-to-back the -back story arcs, the death of the family and Requiem, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we were all heartbroken when we saw Damien go down. Well, like I said, Damien, he is the grandson of Ra's al Ghul. There's a Lazarus pit, and here we go, hijinks ensue. I'm not giving anything away, people. I'm just telling you that uh, you want in on this. This book is these interiors, I'm, I'm not going to give away too terribly much of it. It's one of four, mm -hmm. so let's see how it ends before we judge the whole thing. But I think we're off to a running start. Yes. So this is this marked the return was the Lazarus because I haven't been following as much as I should. Well, I'm just I'm throwing <laughs> God bless Excuse you. Me, guys. I'm, uh, I'm throwing that out there. I mean, you know, I'm trying, like I said, not to spoil. I'm putting okay. the speculative when people say, "How's he going to come back?" Well, there are reasonable methods for this character yeah, you to could, be brought back. Knowing he's a spawn of Ras Al Ghul, you had to know the Lazarus Pit was going to come into play at some point. At some point. Yeah, but I can't wait, and especially with the talent of Andy Kubert on there. Um, you loved him on Flashpoint, which helped kick off the new 52. Um, he's working on that, and I just can't wait to put my eyes through that. It's like eye candy. Yeah, yeah. Um, my next pick of the week, um, you know I recommended uh, the... X-Men special, mm -hmm. the all-new X-Men, then there was uh, the Indestructible Hulk special, and uh, that was part one and part two of the Arms of the Octopus storyline. This is part three of that storyline, finishing it off. This is the Superior Spider-Man team-up, um, uh, again, helping out with that uh, run of that uh, great storyline. You'll want to pick this up if you've been reading the other two. Just some extra great stuff from Marvel, man. Let's uh, flip through real quick. Got some great artwork from a bunch of great artists, and it's just awesome. You have the all-new X-Men involved, you have the Indestructible Hulk, you have the Superior Spider-Man, you know, which is uh, Doc Ock slash Peter Parker. Um, you can't go wrong with that. And just look at the artwork on here, people. Just some fun time art on here. Um, I can't wait to flip my eyes through this and just enjoy myself. And what the heck? Is that Abomination with his head off? What the heck? Uh, you know, so that was I don't want to talk uh, about that too much. I know you all want to read yeah, it. I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, that was in the Indestructible Hulk special was The Abomination. Uh, yes. Yeah, see, see, I, I brought him back behind. in the one. I know, yeah. I know you're behind now. I, I know, I know you got to run to catch up. I'm ahead of you now. Yes. I'm pulling ahead. I'm trying to be like this, man. Oh, see, I'm trying to get like this guy. <laughs> like Troy. This. If I could be like Troy, what would be, what would be like Troy? <laughs> All what right, you got, man? now my next pick up here. Awesome, is I can't wait for that. Annual number one of Aquaman yes. from DC Comics. Okay, now people have been digging on Aquaman. By and large, mm -hmm. it's been all about the Jeff Johns story. Oh, yeah. All about the Jeff Johns characterization, mm -hmm. all about the details of Aquaman's past, Atlantis's past. Uh, we've been digging the vicious version of Black Manta, uh, Ocean Master. Oh, yeah. We've gotten into the stories with the Trench, the Throne of Atlantis. We've gotten into the story with the Dead King. Okay, 
this, I, I couldn't help but notice, John Ostrander is the writer here. Yes. Okay, so, don't think that just because Jeff Johns isn't here that the story is going to take a nosedive. John Ostrander is a great comic writer, and I guarantee you're going to be entertained by this. Oh, yeah. Uh, he doesn't have exactly the same style as Jeff Johns, but he does have a very good, solid writing style. Yes. Uh, I was digging him on books, you know, back in the days of Image Comics and First Comics. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, The Suicide Squad for DC Comics back yeah. in, the, uh, in the 80s, when I thought that book was awesome. Definitely. Uh, I was, at first, I was not a fan of The Suicide Squad, but I gave it a try, picked up those first three issues, and it made me a believer. Same deal. Yeah, yeah, you know, same Aquaman. deal for me. I'm, I'm loving this, and this is bringing back the others who I really enjoyed mm -hmm. at that first opening arc of, on Jeff Johns' run. And we get to find out if you've uh, read a little bit about this upcoming annual book. Um, we get to find out what happened to the Volstock, that great character that was part of the others. And um, I want to shout out, although Jeff Johns has left the book on the regular title because this is the annual. Jeff Parker, who was a good friend of mine, he wrote Inner Man, wrote, a, wrote Robin, wrote a bunch of great books for Marvel and DC. He's the new uh, ongoing writer for Aquaman and is doing a bang-up job. Check him out. His new storyline on Aquaman is amazing. Shout-out to my man, Jeff Parker. Great well, job. No. And shout-out to John Ostrander, who's handling the annual. Well, see, now, I know you're ahead again, so you're an industry insider, because we haven't gotten Parker's issue up here on the shelf yet. The most current issue is still Jeff Johns. So some of us are living in the now. Some of us are living in the future. Shout out to my man, shout out to my man, Jeff Parker. Um, from Marvel, um, I know you've also been enjoying this run. This is another finale that I'm giving to you. It's the Battle of the Atom storyline. This is uh, chapter 10, and this is X-Men Battle of the Atom number 2, which winds it all down. Um, I've been really enjoying this uh, time-displaced 1960s X-Men in our uh, current storyline. Um, Bendis has been doing a bang-up job, and uh, Frank Cho, or is it, is it Cho on here? Did I see on the front correctly? Yeah, is it Frank Cho? It doesn't look like him, though. Hold on. I need to check, yeah, check, yeah. check my look, artist out. Let's look at the credits. I'm going to make sure I give the proper credit. Oh, yeah, it wasn't Frank Cho on here, but they did it wrong on the cover. Um, Assad Ribic with Giuseppe, Giuseppe Camincoli and Andrew Curry and Tom Palmer on the art chores for this. But why did they give Cho the opening stuff there? Anyway. Uh, it looks Marvel, like Marvel, yeah, come on, guys. Clerical error. Clerical error. Clerical but, um, error. But this is the finale, guys. I know you want to check this out. Our time display, 60s X-Men dealing with the current X-Men who've gone all back crazy, especially that Cyclops guy who we all hate now. Well, let's um, not forget the addition of the X-Men from the future. And there are two different groups. True. Uh, and I don't want to give away too much for anybody who's behind the curve who hasn't read it yet, but this Battle of the Atom has been an incredible story. Yes, good stuff. Check it out. This is the finale. You want to check this out because this is going to set up the rest of the books uh, coming out after this. Oh, yeah. Check it out. Oh, yeah. Well, you're all about the finales. Yes. I'm all about the beginnings. Now, well, this <clears> could <throat> be the finale of the Ultimate Universe, my friend. Well, you know, they said the same thing about Ultimatum. Let's see what they say about <laughs> Cataclysm. Yes, sir. Okay. Cataclysm. Ultimate Comics. This is Cataclysm point one. Now, you were following Hunger. Uh, you want to follow from Hunger into Cataclysm. You do? Uh, you, you definitely do. Uh, we are looking at beautiful uh, artwork on yes, this. Look at that. Never mind the the ad for the Mad Engine T-shirts on the other side. Look at that. The depth and detail, the texture. It's just you know the colors. Mm. God, I love. I love I so much. Look at that. Love the modern modern comics. Yes, sir. You know what? I'm a huge fan of Jack Kirby, of Wally Wood, of Frank Frazetta, of John Buscema, of Gil Kane, Definitely. and on and on. But I. I can't say enough about modern artists and modern art techniques. Definitely. Uh, they add so much in terms of rendering the colors, depth, shading, texture. Yes. The kinds of things that weren't really possible in Wally Wood's day. Yes. It doesn't make it better than his, but uh, it does add something I think he would have liked to have taken advantage of. Definitely. i got to say, though, in regards to you know talking about those great classic artists mm -hmm. and now modern technology and the modern way of how they're making these books, when I was flipping through this book, um, I don't know about you, but when I was looking at the artwork on here, it reminded me a lot of my feelings when I first picked up Avengers Annual Number 10 and I first fell in love with Michael Golden. This oh. artist, especially those first opening pages, seems like to be inspired of on Golden. Just some of the detail and just, just, just doesn't that look kind of golden s It does, it does. It's, it's, it's some great stuff. I can't wait to check that little, out. A little bit of influence there. I, you know, I could tell you're a youngster because uh, I came on to Michael Golden back with the Micronauts. So, uh, I, you know... <laughs> 
that I, I fell in love with Michael Golden. Is this your first beer? <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff, man. Good stuff. I can't wait to check Absolutely. out that book. Some yes. great picks. So let's give them our top pick of the week, brother. Yes, indeed. So you got something for me. I do. Uh, from Dark Horse Comics, and with it being a couple days in front of Halloween, my, one of my favorite holidays of the year, um, I want to go in that route. And from Dark Horse Comics, I have Edgar Allan Poe's, Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven and the Red Death. I love the, the story of the Raven. And i got to tell you, I'm a huge fan of the horror master himself, Richard Corbin. Um, he's done work for Marvel and DC, but he's at his best when he's doing kind of like horrific, char horrific characters, just that eerie, dark style um, Corbin is a beast, man. Check this out. Um, I know Troy David wants to speak on Corbin. Go ahead, give him some. But well, just you know, look at this awesomeness. I, I, I've loved Richard Corbin since the days of, like, Den. Uh, yes. Since, you know, old Eerie and Creepy magazines. Yes. I've seen covers that he's done. Uh, there was a series that he did back in the day called mm -hmm. Rip in Time. Uh, Richard Corbin is amazing. He has a very detailed, very naturalistic style, very textured. Uh, his figures are... Believable and yes. yet still, there's a there's a very indi individualistic, oh, yeah. you know, a lot of facial detail, a lot Expressions. of. Well, you remember Dan? Yes. You remember Dan? I mean, that that says it all right there. Mm -hmm. Everything good about Richard Corbin is in the Dan run. Check it out, guys. And so much, yeah. And of course, classics, classics. Edgar Allan Poe, mm -hmm. The Raven, The Raven. Never more, never more. You know, that's. Definitely. So yeah, this is uh, th this is definitely for the upscale reader. Uh, Y'all in Patrick's uh, economic <laughs> class. Uh, and, I think uh, everyone can enjoy this book. I think so, too. You're going to love it. Check it out. Great one shot. Gets you in the Halloween mood. I love it. Can't wait to put my eyes through it. You know, I, I would not be surprised if some of my customers who are teachers don't pop in to pick up a copy or two to share with their classes. Definitely. And, uh, you know, use good literature to gateway them into comics. Awesome. And also for those artists out there, if you want an artist that will inspire you. Corbin is... Corbin's a beast. He's an amazing artist, yeah. man. I can't tell you, as an artist myself, when I was coming up and finding artists that would inspire me, Corbin, I just grabbed everything that had his name on it. No, you know, Patrick's all right. He's no Richard Corbin. No, I'm not. <laughs> what else you got, brother? What's okay. your top pick of the week? Now, we're in the Halloween theme. Yes, sir. So, I'm going with Sandman Ooh. Overture. That's a big one. Okay. J.H. Williams III, Neil Gaiman. Sandman. And look at Morpheus there in his uh, in the in the helmet. Ah oh, man, the helm. Yes. Remember Preludes and Nocturnes? Yes. Got to get the helm. Got to get the. Uh, it was the bag of sand. And what was the third item? Was it was it a book? No, no, that's not the book. That's Destiny. I gotta catch up. Yeah, I got I got to go back and reread that. I'm uh, I'm seeing a, so a nice the awesomeness inside. Man. Yeah, yeah. Look at this. This is just this is going to be so Beautiful. incredible. Um, I've missed regular Sandman. I've, I've missed having this book on a regular basis. It was a top seller. A uh, lot of people love it, both male, female. It was one of those books that really crossed over for a lot of um, readers out there. You know, it was it was so intelligently written. And yes. It was beautifully illustrated, and it had an amazing cast of characters. The story moved very dynamically from beginning to end. I, there, there are no bad issues. There are no bad story arcs. Uh, you know, not everyone has their favorites. Season of Mists is mine, mm -hmm. but... Uh, you know, what can you say? You know, it's just, it's all so very good. Yes, sir. Uh, and I think a lot of people are going to be glad to have the Sandman back, even if it's only for a limited time. Yeah. Uh, you know, this won't be, unfortunately, an ongoing series that goes on forever and ever and ever, but this will be the kind of thing that you can definitely go back to the well. Oh, it's definitely enjoy. a book, if you were a huge fan of the beginning stuff of, of Sandman, Neil Gaiman teased that uh, in... Page five, you'll definitely want to focus on page five. Something happens to the endless cast. If you're a fan of all of the Sandman characters, that, that great group of cast of characters of, that's part of the Sandman storyline, you'll definitely want to check this out because it explains a lot of what happened prior to that issue one from what I hear. Um, I didn't really, really read a lot of Sandman back in the day, but from the artwork I saw, it was very inspiring. And from the, everybody that tells me, you need to read it, you need to read it. It's on my must-read list. Definitely well, you know, I'll tell you what, Patrick, you uh, definitely have some good luck here because now the Sandman collection is available in so many different formats. Yes. There's a standard trade paperback, which is the most economical way to go, and it collects them in story arcs, mm -hmm. Preludes and Nocturnes, The Dream Country, Dollhouse, Season of Mist, right on down the line. Awesome. Uh, you can also find those in hardcovers where they capture a couple more issues. It's an expanded page count. Very attractive, beautiful book, suitable for gift giving, looks wonderful on the bookcase. There's the absolute editions, the big yeah. monster 
this, when, when you give somebody this book and say, here, I got this for you, what that says is undying friendship. This is it. Rock solid. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking for one of those from you. Uh, <laughs> well, then all I have to say is, do we have some of them here at Flashback? Uh, right now, I have paperbacks and hardcovers, and uh, the Absolute Editions, that's something that I'll be looking uh, to get in the store, definitely to have going towards the holiday season. All right, so if you want it, um, let them know what they have yes, to do. You, you got to come here to Flashback. Let Troy know. We'll get them for you. And uh, as always, what well, we always do around this time. Well, you know, I'll tell you what, too. I am happy to answer uh, personal, uh, private messages on Facebook. Oh, yeah. So you have to like us on Facebook. Like us on Facebook. Uh, and friend me. I'm Troy David Phillips. And you got to follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter and like him and friend him on Facebook. Uh, yeah, please. And you got to subscribe to us on YouTube. Subscribe on the YouTube. This is Troy David Phillips. Friend him on Facebook. He needs friends. Yes, I do. I need all the friends I can get. I'm Patrick Michael Strange. Because sometimes Patrick Strange leaves me behind and goes to Vegas. <laughs> I won't do that again. <laughs> I We're out. Until next time. Peace, y'all. Shout out to my man Mark Lutz, as always, on the camera. <laughs>